So just recently I've estimated that I have roughly 25,000 hours of combined print time on my Ender 3 V2 print farm. Um, I've exclusively been printing these cases that I designed and I sell on my website and I just did a little calculating to see how many cases that I've sold and I was able to estimate that I have roughly uh, 25,000 hours of print time over the past 10 months on my print farm and I thought it would make a really good video to showcase what parts uh, I've replaced over the course of those 10 months uh, while managing and maintaining this print farm and uh, what symptoms to kind of look for whenever your prints don't come out how you expect uh, it might be a part that just needs to be either cleaned adjusted or just replaced altogether so I thought it would I thought it would be a good idea to go over and show you guys those parts um, so I've made a little list and I've also kind of saved some parts that have broken over the past few months so I can make a video about it in no particular order uh, am I gonna go over these it's just whatever um, you know comes to mind but probably the most common item that I replace is nozzles I mean this is no big surprise here nozzles uh, they do clog and so I bought a pack of 20 nozzles and whenever I get a print that clogs uh, I don't even use these anymore I don't think it's really worth it nozzles are so cheap I just heat up the nozzle and replace it and get right back to printing so nozzles are definitely an item that you want to keep in stock uh, this is probably my second 20 quantity 20 uh, bag so I probably have 10 or 12 left in here uh, another item that has gone out is the extruder gear so for the Ender 3 it's made out of plastic and what you notice here is that it's cracked and what actually happened uh, or the way I found this was that I had a print that came out like this so this looks like a clog so initially what I did is I just replaced the nozzle and then I went back to printing but then it came out exactly like this again so then I took a look at the extruder and noticed that the lever was break was broke so it wasn't providing any tension on the filament and it wasn't uh, causing a good grip to feed through the nozzle so I went ahead on Amazon and I purchased this all metal uh, extruder gear and it works great so I've replaced probably about three or four of these already on my print farm and uh, as they break I'm just replacing with these uh, upgraded metal ones uh, another another thing that was causing uh, clogs on my printer were the stock extruder has some they get gunk in them for some reason Let's see if I can get a good oh yeah there we go you see all that gunk inside so I've asked some people on message boards and some say that this is uh, the filament that has the oils on it and over time it gunks up and so this has caused issues for me and I didn't want to clean it and rebuild it so instead what I did is I purchased these all metal cheapo clones of the micro swiss hot in from Amazon these were 35 bucks and every time I get one of these that's really gunked up and pretty bad I just swap it out for one of these and I am good to go uh, another item that has uh, that I have replaced is the hot end fan and this one what happens is that when this seizes up and no longer spins you end up getting jams because your entire hot end melts the filament you can see here how this is a normally normal 1.75 millimeter um, strand of filament but this thick portion what is what was in in the uh, in the hot end Let's see if I can focus there and so yeah this won't pass through the nozzle so if you have jams and it's not the nozzle and it's not the extruder gear 
then I would definitely look at, oh, and you know it's not your hot end, so I would definitely look at the fan because the fan, this one doesn't even spin anymore. And so that's definitely causing issues. One of the symptoms that you will notice is that these plates will get really hot to the touch and that means that this fan is not working. So I did have to replace one of those. Uh, lead screw nuts, that is an issue that uh, has affected my first layer quality. So I did make a video on that. I have that on my channel. You can go and check that out, how lead screw nuts have fixed my elephant's foot. And also uh, I have much better consistent first layers. So lead screw nuts, definitely something you wanna have in stock. Also a set of belts. Over the 10 months that I've been printing with this print farm, I have only replaced two belts. One printer I had to press uh, replace the Y axis and another printer I had to re replace the X axis. Uh, so it's good to have I bought three sets, so I have two spare sets still in case some printers go down. Uh, I did buy a set of the part cooling fan, which I've never had a failure. No issues there, but I did have for the extruder fan, but the kit that I bought on Amazon came with two of the uh, hot end fans and two part cooling fans. So that's why you see that there. Um, and that's basically it. Uh, the the build plate, the build plate. I have these Bethany Bay Flex build plates, and these are really nice. But the only issue is that I didn't realize that I had to adjust my Z offset. I should have known better. But whenever I switched from the stock hot end to this all metal hot end, uh, the the height is different. So I had to adjust my Z offset. And I didn't do that, so when I went to print, it actually jammed into the uh, flex plate. And typically, if I was just making whatever, I wouldn't care. But, but since I sell these cases, you can see how it leaves nasty marks there. So I try to resurface it with some steel wool. And if that doesn't work, then I use these really awesome PEI sheets from Gizmo Dorks. Yeah, this stuff is good. 235 by 235 millimeter for the Ender 3. And I just lay it right on top. And this is what it looks like. I mean, and this stuff is like super glue for PLA. And for ABS too. I've printed ABS and man, it, it, you almost have to use a grinder to get that stuff off. But uh, yeah, that, that that's another item that I do replace a lot of out of my 15 printers. I keep some spares, uh, some, oops, yeah, so you can see how these have gone bad, but that's usually caused by user error. Um, these couplers, I never really had an issue with the couplers, I never actually replaced any, and then I keep a spare set of, of these socks, uh, the silicone socks. And uh, that is about it. Nothing major. Nothing major. These, I would say the Ender 3 is pretty reliable. I mean, for being such a cheap printer, I maintain this entire print farm by myself. And I have a full-time job, and I'm usually pretty busy on the evenings too. But I still manage to fulfill my orders, and whenever a machine goes down, I spend maybe five minutes max uh, doing the repairs so I would say this is a pretty good machine to, to get started with your Ender 3 print farm uh, I have been working with the Ender 6 which I absolutely love this thing is fast I print pretty reliably about 150 millimeters per second so I can actually print faster with one of these than I can with two Ender 3's so by the time this Ender 3 makes one case I've already almost made two cases with this machine so I'm gonna start phasing out two Ender 3's for one Ender 6 and there's a lot of advantages the spacing and all that stuff but that's for another video 
anyways i'm going to leave links in the description for this stuff um if you are running a print farm let's just say you have three printers or six or whatever you know just just carry two of each you know it doesn't hurt and if you are on a tight schedule where you can't really have much downtime on your printers uh definitely have these items in on hand and it'll keep you from having a lot of downtime anyways that's all i have for today uh i appreciate everybody that has a that has subscribed to my channel um, and I'll continue to try to put out information that I think is valuable anyways thanks for watching guys